I have a Minolta MD Rocker X 50mm 1.2 lens here that I'm going to be disassembling. This is one of the largest aperture Minolta lenses that they made. And if you look at it compared to something like the 58mm, also 1.2 MC, uh, Rocker PG, this lens is actually much easier to take apart. It's much closer to the MD Rocker X's, and it's very easy to take apart, actually, compared to this MC Rocker PG, which is probably one of the most difficult lenses that Minolta made to actually take apart and repair correctly. So I'm going to be taking apart this lens to get access to the diaphragm and the optics on their own, and also many of the body sections on their own. Because this is also a later design Minolta lens, some of the pieces are a little bit more integrated, such as having the diaphragm and focusing mechanism being a single unit, which I believe they did on this lens to really save space because the optics are so large. So we'll start off here and get access to the front of the diaphragm. You'll notice that the name ring going around here, there are two little divots for a spanning wrench on either side. Um, but those are not actually what you want to uh, take off at this stage. So instead, you want to focus out until you reveal this little screw over here. And this screw is holding on the entire front black section here that the filter screw into. So you want to do this little slotted screw. Just loosen that up a little bit. And now this entire front section just screws out of place with the name ring and everything. All right, and that exposes the front optic fully, so we can actually now go in and remove the front optic. And looking, or I remove the entire front optical, um, all the elements there. So looking at the front piece here, you'll notice there are two little indentations on either side of this big front optical piece uh, that you can use a pointed tip spanning wrench on. All right, and that removes the pretty uh, large sized front optical piece. Looking at this piece as well, you can actually further disassemble it, and it's very easy to do that. The uh, only complication is that it's pretty easy to get dust and fingerprints inside the lens if you're taking it apart and you aren't careful. Um, but if there is fungus inside the lens, uh, you can see that there's this second ring on the front optical piece going around here, and there are two little divots for a spanning wrench that were the ones that were exposed before. That's holding on this black ring up here and that's holding in the front optical piece. So once you undo this front optical piece, you can actually remove the three groups in there and clean inside of those individually. There's the first group, and then there's a separator piece, and then the second group, and then like the back group as well that's kind of fused into the back housing of the lens. So you can actually clean it pretty well. And that exposes the front of the diaphragm. So you can see the diaphragm is also a pretty good size um, on this lens, and it takes up quite a bit of space in here. So now we'll get access to the back of the diaphragm as well. So looking at the back of the lens, the most obvious thing you'll notice is the size of the back optic, which is much, much larger than on a uh, normal 1.7 or 1.4 Minolta lens, uh, 50 millimeter. So on the back mounting plate here, we see these four screws going around here. And that's going to just remove the mounting plate. So I'll undo these four. All right now, just lift off the entire mounting plate. And you can see that all the things that are coupling the stop down lever, it's actually on the back of the mounting plate here. So the spring that's holding the stop down lever open, and then the actual stop down lever control, which I'll just talk a little bit more on the reassembly about. But it's a very simple mechanical setup. Uh, they really had to push all the elements out to the side of the lens, but overall, it's a, a pretty simple setup here. So now we can see the back optic on its own as well, this entire center section here. Um, and to actually undo this, we're going to use the two little divots kind of recessed pretty far down here on either side of the back optic to undo it fully. And this will expose the back of the diaphragm as well. All right, so there's the large back optical piece as well. Now we have exposed both sides of the diaphragm. And because you'll notice here that the, if I focus out a little bit, you can kind of see that the diaphragm piece here, diaphragm housing, is integrated into the focusing mechanism. Um, because of that, it's not really uh, too, you don't gain a lot by actually separating the diaphragm out any further. There's, you can clean it pretty well in its current state. Uh, we'll also remove a few more components though and actually remove the diaphragm as much as you can on its own. So first off, we have the aperture control ring going around here. And 
It has a little tiny ball bearing somewhere over in this section, I believe, um, that makes the clicking sound as it turns back and forth, but it's not, nothing's holding it in place right now. I should just have to be careful not to lose the ball bearing. There we go. And then the ball bearing is right over here under the indicator. And now you can notice that the other body sections here are pretty well integrated. The one other piece that we can actually remove though is the diaphragm housing. As I mentioned though, it is integrated into the interior part of the focusing mechanism. So what we're gonna do is focus as far outward so this piece is as far protruding out as possible. And then here on the back of the lens, what we wanna do is actually unscrew the interior of the focusing mechanism further past where you, where you normally could. So right here it's getting stopped when I hit up against this one end. So we actually wanna go past there. And what's stopping it is this little track system down here. So there's this um, metal track right in on the exterior and then this metal piece on the interior that's going along that track. And that prevents the inner interior from turning um, when you focus in and out. So it locks the interior in place so that the interior just moves up and down that track. But we wanna remove that so we can actually focus past where we normally can. So the first step of doing that is to remove the little spring mechanism that's on to, going onto this track. So there's one side of the spring is over here, the other side is right here. So I'm just gonna press backwards on this piece here to undo it. And there's the spring. And now that I've removed that spring, we can actually undo both of the two screws that are holding in place this little track system. So there's the one normal screw over here and then the one slotted screw that the uh, spring was going onto. So undo both of these. And just lift this little track piece out of place as well. Now we can grab the top of the lens here, the actual interior. So I'm gonna focus to infinity right here, grab the interior of the lens and just spin it out. You want to note where it actually falls out of the lens because that will help with the reassembly. So I've kind of made a mark on it previously that indicates over by the 0.45 minimum focusing distance is where the diaphragm internal part separated from the lens. Now we can just separate those two. So we have the exterior with the uh, exterior part of the focusing mechanism here and then the interior with the diaphragm. As I mentioned though, the interior is coupled in um, with the uh, interior of the focusing mechanism. So the diaphragm is coupled in with the interior of the focusing mechanism. So you don't really gain too much uh, from being able to clean it by removing it to this state. To actually disassemble the diaphragm um, is actually laid out very similar to a lot of Minolta lenses. The way you would take apart the blades and um, actually undo the diaphragm is this metal plate going around the top here the silver plate is what's holding it in place um, or holding the top plate, the black plate that's holding the blades in place. That's what's holding those in place. Um, and the little three slotted screws on the exterior going around here are what are holding in this metal plate right here. So by undoing those, you can then lift off this metal plate and then lift off the top plate of the diaphragm, remove all the blades and clean those individually if there's quite a bit of oil on them. So that actually has most of this lens disassembled. Uh, you can see that there aren't that many components, which is really one of the advantages of some of these later uh, Minolta designs. And it is made using pretty high quality components as well. So it is repairable, unlike some of the uh, even later, just regular MD rocker lenses. We have the optics here, which can be further disassembled, uh, separate from the body sections, such as the name ring and the focusing mechanism here also separate from the diaphragm and interior part of the focusing mechanism. And there really just aren't a lot of pieces here and you can get access to the different parts of the lens very quickly, which is a nice feature. So now to start on the reassembly of this lens. First off, I'm gonna grab this focusing mechanism here and we have to get the diaphragm back into the focusing mechanism. So I'm gonna find the 0.45 where I made the mark before and find on the diaphragm mechanism that little line that I drew earlier. Line these two up so that I'm screwing it back together in the correct orientation. That looks good. Now just thread these together. And I'm gonna find on the back section here where the two holes over here line up with the track. So I have to spin this around a little bit further. 
uh, and that looks good. So you want the track system over here to be just about in between the two holes right there to actually lock this in place so it doesn't spin around. So now actually taking this little track piece, I'm going to just slide it down there. And first off, I'll install the slotted screw longer piece right here. So this one goes over on this side right here next to the other one, and it's what the uh, spring is going to couple onto. And then install the normal looking screw on the other side. And now we also have to reinstall that spring that we removed before so we could actually remove that piece. So the spring right here is just a wire. You can see that it has a shorter side over here and then a longer side up here. The longer side is going to curve over and go onto the little section over here, this post, black post. Um, and this is going to loop over in the center. It's going to loop over this silver post here. And then the shorter side is going to go over here. So the easiest way to do this, I find, is to get the shorter side first, uh, get that behind the post. It's going to go with the um, fork here going inwards. Now I'm going to bend the longer side to go over back behind this other post. And there we go. And now it should hold itself open, make sure that it's all locked into the correct grooves on here. So that when you hit this lever, it automatically springs back open. So next up to install the aperture control ring. Uh, the aperture control ring is going to couple into the diaphragm on this silver post over here. So this is actually controlling the uh, minimum diaphragm that you can uh, open up. And then the stop down lever is going into the black post over here, which is actually um, holding the diaphragm open normally. So you can see as I move this along, the stop down lever doesn't do anything, only at the uh, minimum aperture does it, you can actually see it doing something. So the diaphragm, or the aperture control ring, is going to just slide over with the little metal forked piece going down onto this metal post over here, like that. But then we also have to get the little ball bearing back in place as well. So the ball bearing goes right under this indicator here into the little indentation. And now lining that up, just going to slide this on top of the ball bearing first. And if you did that correctly, let's see, it should be making the clicking sound as it rotates back and forth. You can also adjust how the diaphragm opens and closes slightly, or if you want, or if you're having trouble getting the ball bearing in place and getting this fork onto the post in a single step, you can do both of those things by adjusting or removing this little metal piece over here that the little fork and you can loosen up these two screws to adjust how far this little post can go back and forth if it's not opening or closing properly. Or if you just want to remove that, get the ball bearing in place, and then reinstall the fork. That can make it a little bit easier. And to complete the back reassembly, we'll just install this back optical piece as well. So it just screws in place. And use a spanning wrench and the two little divots on either side to lock it down fully. And then to finish things off on the back, we have to reinstall the mounting plate. Uh, so the mounting plate has the stop down lever right here, which is held open by a little spring over on this side. And this mounting plate is going to couple into this black lever right here, which we saw before, which directly opens and closes the diaphragm. So it just is going to slide on top of there. And we can rotate it around until we find the four screw holes on the back are lined up properly. So flipping over the lens here, now just to put back together the front as well, get the front reassembled. So this front reassembly is pretty easy. We have the front optical piece first, which just screws in place. And you can use the pointed tip spanning wrench to lock the front optical piece down fully. And then all we have left is the little name ring here. So it just also screws in place on the front. And we can use the little screw here to lock that down. 
All right, so that has the reassembly of this lens complete. As you can see, it's really not a hard lens to take apart, even though it is one of the 1-2 uh, Minolta lenses, especially if you compare it to something like the MC Rocker PG lens here, 58 millimeter. Uh, but this one is much, much harder to take apart, whereas this 50 millimeter 1-2 um, MC Rocker or MD Rocker X is uh, very close actually to the other MD Rocker X 50 millimeter lenses, the 1.7 and the 1.2, and it might even be slightly easier in some ways um, just because of how it's laid out. Another nice feature of this lens is that you can actually go in and disassemble the front optic pretty well. The back optic is a little bit harder to disassemble, um, but things like the diaphragm can also be taken apart very easily, and it's very similar to the other 1.7 and 1.4 50 millimeter lenses in how it's set up. Some of the components are a little bit more integrated, uh, but that is one of the design compromises of having such large optics in the lens. Um, and it's something that these later Minolta lenses did do often. So this is a surprisingly easy lens to actually take apart and repair.